It's been three years since I left corporate. By the time I realized I had to go, I think I was like physically and mentally deteriorating. Do I really want to do this for the rest of my life? So how did I know? What were the signs that corporate was not for me? The sign is that you become someone else that you don't even recognize. Those are the signs. It's just crazy how like not present I was with my day in my life. These are hours and days of my own precious life that I feel like I was just trying to escape from, which is sad. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am a little under the weather, so if you hear something in my voice, I am probably getting sick, which ironically reminds me a lot of today's video and what it's about because when I used to get sick in corporate, oh my God, like the way I would just give up on life, like just completely, I am here to report that I am still working, cold or not, and I don't hate it, which is crazy. So yeah, we're gonna film this video sick, and but we're healthy in other ways, we're healthy in other ways, so let's talk about it. It's been three years since I left corporate, which feels like a lifetime ago. I'm not even kidding. It's felt like I've lived 17 lives between 2020 and 2024. And I don't know what that is, but I tell people all the time when you leave corporate, the time, like it feels like it doubles. At least that was the experience for me. It's the new year. People are contemplating on their life, what they've been doing, what's working, what's not working. And I'm just shocked at the amount of times I consistently hear how people hate their jobs, how they feel empty, how they feel a void. And it's been so long for me. I've literally had like three different career paths, two businesses in this time. I always feel like, oh, that was just me. That was my experience. But when I post about things on TikTok, when I tell my story, it feels like people are coming to me with this problem like in the present day. And I know it's still happening, but like, it's just crazy that that's still happening because that was something I had to like escape from. I literally felt like I had to jump out of it because I couldn't do it anymore. And it all happened at once. So it's not uncommon in this time period to start thinking about like, do I really want to do this for the rest of my life? Is this really for me? How come I can't seem to make this work? I think it's just your voice and your future self, honestly, just calling you towards what you're actually supposed to be doing. And if you resonate with any of that, this video is for you and will hit. And if you don't resonate with this and you're having a great time in corporate, this video is not for you. Maybe you don't need to hear it. Corporate wasn't always bad for me. It wasn't always a negative experience, but by the time I realized I had to go, I think I was like physically and mentally deteriorating. I don't think I even understood how much I needed to leave until I left. Looking back, I'm like, thank God I left. And I could see how I thought at the time that I was like this corporate baddie. I love working. I love constantly being under stress and anxiety. And to a T, I do feel like that, but it's not with the work that I was doing, which was partly my fault. And then I think also partly just something that society feeds you, your parents feed you. So it's kind of hard to find your own footing and find your own path when you're constantly being fed, what to do, how to do it, what job to take, uh, what companies to work at, and also being sold this dream that if you follow your passions, you are gonna be financially unstable, unhappy, confused only, and that if you go towards corporate, you're gonna have the financial stability, the health, the prosperity, and I don't think that's a reality for most people in corporate. Of course, not every job is perfect, but I don't think that, I don't even think 60 or 70% of people are thriving in corporate. I don't think there's a point to staying anywhere that you're not thriving or getting close to thriving because this is your life. Like at the end of the day, it's your life. So I wanted to make this video because I, at the time when I was leaving my job or wanting to quit, I was so desperately looking for answers and looking for people who had done it before because it felt so new and foreign to me. No one around me was doing it. It felt like I was the only person who needed to leave, who was losing their mental health, who was losing their, their just like sanity. And I needed to see an example of somebody who had done it and survived. I thought I would make a video about how to know if corporate's not for you, how to know, read the signs, read the room and take the signal. Um, because I do think even though I can't give blanket advice like just quit up and quit your job like everybody should just up and quit their job I will say if you are feeling some kind of resistance negativity you feel yourself changing your personality changing your mental health your physical health changing and you are not enjoying what you're doing you don't feel aligned that is not a mistake I don't think that's a coincidence or an accident so I would just say if you don't do anything else listen to it and take one step towards that voice that's calling you towards something else, whether that's just one little video that you make or sewing or painting or taking a day off, taking a PTO, like do something that is closer to the direction of the voice that's calling you because you are in a space, speaking from experience, you are in a space where you you're not processing information correctly because your brain is probably overloaded with stress and anxiety and fear and survival. You're not, you're basically not thinking clearly. And I wasn't thinking clearly 
really so I had to just leave my next step was to just leave the environment with no job no plan to see what was next and that space gave me the room to explore and play and figure out that I was in a complete I was in the wrong department I was in the wrong industry I was just everything was wrong I'm doing this for the younger version of me who needed someone to tell her it's gonna be okay because I can tell her and I can tell you it's gonna be more than okay to leave and to do what you actually want to do but if you're still confused watch this video I'm gonna talk about all the signs that I had and I think are tall tale signs that I even see in my friends or other people who have come to me about this and I do think this is a sign that you need to pivot in some form or fashion I'm gonna give my shortened version of my story of how I left with no plan in 2020 in the middle of COVID uh, but I do have a whole YouTube video covering the whole story like from beginning to end and then I also have a video about freelancing which is what I did right after um, leaving my corporate job but it took me a while to get stable there and I talk about that entire journey of how I tripled my income from corporate um, in just a year pursuing what I actually like to do and pursuing my passion to wrap it up I think I fell into this kind of like hustle culture like corporate is the way it's the only way mindset my university really fed that to me I did a double major in supply chain and marketing marketing added on later even though marketing has always been the moment for me I just was like no this is not a real job people in marketing they work rent job and they take forever to get to like a good income I'm never gonna make it like I had this mentality like this outdated mentality about that so I added marketing as a side major like my second major but my main one was supply chain which I thought was boring and if you don't know what that is logistics procurement and all the behind the scenes of a lot of these big companies think Amazon and that was not interesting to me I think I chose it literally out of the notion of safety and stability Ability. I thought it was lucrative. I ended up getting a job at a big telecommunications company in my city and I interned there. I worked there for a year and a half I think full-time. Total I think it was like two and a half years of, for my internship to when I left and I thought this was the prize. I thought this was everything. This is where I was gonna make my mark until COVID hit and I think all of the distractions about the job were no longer uh, giving. We couldn't go into the office. There was no happy hours. There's no Starbucks runs. There was no pretending on this corporate Carrie Bradshaw, like lots of calls. We had lost like a team member. So I picked up a lot of work. It wasn't just the work. It was a lot of what I was doing. I did not enjoy. And this is where I realized I should not have been so try hard about everything. I think as a perfectionist and someone who likes to perform and do well and achieve, I was basically girl bossing way too close to the sun. I interviewed, I studied really hard for this role for this position as an analyst or consultant that I didn't even really want like I was just working towards someone else's goal it wasn't even mine but I think I convinced myself that it was society people around me this was the norm this was popular especially in business school they really push it down our throats like if you land a job at a company you're set for life there's nothing else you need to do the entire time even before COVID I always had this high level anxiety when I went into the office my body was always like in chills or shaking like I'm naturally a cold person but my body was always tense. I was so nervous to talk to everybody. I wanted to impress everyone. It was always like a, how can I show and tell more than I'm actually doing the work? It was very much like visibility. If we see you in the office, you're doing well. If we don't see you in the office, you're not doing well. And I don't want to describe my team and my job to be like the worst thing on earth. Like there was obviously parts of it that I liked, but generally it was putting on a mask every day just to fit in. It was just so normal, but it's so not me now that I think about it. And like, I don't like math. I don't like science I don't like ass kissing I like my 100% freedom I like to be creative when COVID hit and I was home alone doing all this work there was really nothing to daydream or fantasize about I was left with the reality of the work which I didn't like I hated it I thought it was so boring I was just on calls all day I'm starting to fall into content and realize I like that more and when you have something you like versus something you don't like next to each other you start to see how much you hate the thing that you hate and I feel like I turned into a shell of myself I dreaded work I hated thinking about work when someone brought up data analytics or anything close to my job I hated it I just did, I wanted nothing to do with this job and I remember I would have these 6 a.m. meetings to meet with like people in a different team around the world and I would just be like sitting up like waiting before that meeting looking at my screen knowing I couldn't figure out what I was supposed to present to them and I had no idea what I was talking about and it was just terrifying like you were expected to answer messages and to be on calls and to deliver work and be happy and ha have a good time and it there was it was not possible so I remember I had one day where I was just like I have to stay at this job for one more year to pay off my loans like it's a lot of have to's I should I have to I have to and then I was like, okay, fine. I know you hate it. Just wait a year. Literally the next day I came back and I was like, 
I can't do this for another day. And I think that was in July of 2020. By September, I finally told my boss, like I must have the strength. I was looking at YouTube videos, trying to figure out how other people were living life because I didn't have a backup plan. I just knew I wasn't supposed to do corporate. I had never been as sure about this, something in my life without knowing the next step. Everyone older than me was telling me, this is a mistake, you shouldn't do this, you should have something lined up. And I knew I just didn't want to have anything lined up. I just, I felt like I was not only done with the job, I think I was done with corporate in general and i didn't have a job lined up i entertained a few interviews and i just like this is the same thing i can't do this like i can't do this again i don't want to enter another thing i just left and i eventually left in october and then i became convinced that i was going to be an influencer so wow what if i just like try to buy time until i become this influencer which failed and i have a video on that too if you're interested in how that turned out and during this time i was just like i don't want to apply to regular jobs so let me apply to upwork job and freelance and try to see what that's about my freelance video i talk about all that journey but basically it took me from december of 2020 to may of 2021 to get a full-time income again but i want to get into some of the signs that i in retrospect noticed were like red flags that i just was not seeing at the time so how did i know what were the signs that corporate was not for me. I would say number one, first and foremost, my values did not match. My values did not match corporate, I think in general, but especially the company and the people around me. Values was something I was ironically introduced to during an HR exercise on this job. It was in March of 2020, right before COVID hit, that I really had this like weird, like out of body experience at like a leadership summit. Past iffy and future iffy were like at a crossroads. And it was like the first time I was realizing this. They presented like the HR team presented an HR exercise where you write down your values and you talk about them and I just remember like everybody at the table writing down these values that just like they were fine there's nothing wrong with these values but like I realized how different theirs were from mine and I couldn't believe how different it was because everyone I feel like had someone else at the table who had values that were similar to their integrity responsibility dignity family they were just very like serious not gen z <laughs> even the people even the younger people with me were like about these serious values and if you don't know what values are i feel like they're good constraints that's what i like to call them i have a podcast episode all about values and how they literally changed my life and this was the moment i feel like they are words that you ground yourself in and they mean something to you and i feel like how you decide is you look at a list and choose your top 10 your top five your top three you kind of narrow down until you get to like the core ones but i would say top three to five are like really key in your life and how you know something is a value is that's usually what comes up when you make decisions um my values were freedom number one was freedom creativity fun i think i have achievement but it's like on my latter end individuality authenticity like those are so key to me i had my values and i was listening to everyone's and funny enough i was the last person to go and i was reading my values off and i just felt so out of place that's so weird that like i'm the only one who has any of these words on their list and i'm sitting with executives like these are the people i'm going to be one day if i pursue this corporate dream and it was kind of during that retreat that i realized like i don't want to be any of them like not individually as people but like i don't envy this lifestyle i don't envy like this job or what they're doing my values were not aligned with the people around me who were supposed to be my like role models and i think funny enough like jealousy envy has a bad rap i mean it is a nasty weird feeling to feel but it does give you an indicator. And I know now that anytime I do feel jealous of people, I do feel envious, like that's the direction I should be going in because that means I see that potential for myself. What I was envious of and jealous of was creators, people who are YouTubers, people who are making content and starting businesses, like that's who I cared about. Number two, I think the work was never aligning with me. Um, that's just the classic indicator i think we all know what work is that we like and we don't like of course there's always like you need to learn experience and gain experience from people above you and most of my career i was doing things i like didn't love but it was interesting enough at the time like when i was 16 i worked at like a froyo shop i worked at mcdonald's i worked at these places it's not my dream job but i was curious enough to learn the skill and do it right but you always have a point where you outgrow what you're what you've learned either or were you just say i don't think this is something i care to grow into you know what i mean and for the first year i kept telling myself i'm like you're just new at this this is why you're not grasping it this is why you're not getting it i felt imposter syndrome like crazy i could never grasp the concepts i could never grasp the languages that i was learning or the softwares that we were using it just wasn't easy and natural for me and like not that it should be like a piece of cake but it was far from a piece of cake like it was a little too hard for me to understand like 
Shaheen would have to do like some of my work for me and like help me with it. He does AI machine learning, so he really understands this stuff. And I would just be like, I don't get this. And rightfully so, this is so not me. I've never been that person. I think my mistake was thinking I could just kind of like work past that. I feel like in business school, like there's very much this mentality, like finance bro mentality, like you can do anything. And I think I, I can do anything, but should you do everything? I think that was the question I should have asked myself. I think because everyone was like, this is a good job, it's good pay. Like you just get yeses from everybody that you don't even realize it doesn't align with you. RFPs or proposals, if you know anything about that world, it's basically like long contracts, negotiating, saving money. And these are all things that I couldn't give a rat's ass about. And I felt like I was like forcing myself to be interested because I wanted to look good and do a good job. Number three, I was talking more than I was doing. And I feel like if this is not a sign, I don't know what it is. Like if you feel like the only time you're working on something is when you're talking about it, maybe there's some disconnect between what you're doing and your actual passion or interest or curiosity or skill level. One, corporate structure never gives you the time to get any work done. We were always in meetings, it was so annoying. But I felt like even if I was getting work done and even if I did accomplish projects, like I wasn't proud of it. I would get promoted or I would get pats on the back and people would tell me like, that's really good or you handled that really well. And I didn't feel it, like I didn't feel any of it. And it wasn't just me like not taking a compliment. Like I never felt that my work was as important as the compliments I was receiving. And now like if someone Somebody compliments a video of mine or an Instagram post or something I do in my business I feel it I'm like really like you think so like it actually impacts me and I don't think at the time I didn't care I mean the only thing I was motivated by was money which I don't think is a great thing to be motivated by completely if I nailed a project if I presented something really well it never really had anything to do with like wow I'm getting better at this skill I'm getting better at Tableau or Excel or whatever it was more like oh they liked me oh my god guys the Sunday Sunday scaries, I can't even, I can't even begin to tell you how many Sunday scaries I had. I didn't know what I was doing for the life of me. I just remember feeling so stupid. I couldn't ever explain anything I was talking about. And I luckily have the skill of like communicating and speaking. So I think I could like BS my way out of it. I basically BS myself into this job. I would be paralyzed. Like I would be up late thinking, contemplating, like should I stay up for three more hours and get nothing done? Or should I go to sleep and feel guilty and then wake up and be fried before the meeting and have nothing done? Like it was this constant loop of feeling like I don't have anything done. I didn't finish this. I never got to this. I don't know what I'm doing. I remember like when we had interns, I'd be like, can you help me? Like I didn't even know how to teach them. It was bad. And my anxiety in my body, like I'm not even an anxious person, but the anxiety in my body was just, I feel like on overdrive with that job. And I think I noticed this in my skin, in my hair, in my face. I just noticed how tired I look, like the bags under my eyes. I also didn't have any like good routines at the time. I was just like in bed. I would wake up, pull out my laptop, all in the dark, by the way start working, go to sleep really late, doom scroll because I'm so depressed about this job. Like the moment I got to close my laptop, I, would, I was like, let's go. I would go get treats every day to make myself feel better, get boba, get ice cream, get fast food. It was just like this toxic, vicious cycle. And that is just so not who I am. Like all of those things I do occasionally, but when I'm doing the work I do now, like I actually want to spend more time doing the work that I enjoy and actually being healthier for my job instead of the opposite. This one was the biggest one. I was living to escape. I'm kind of just learning what escapism is. This was peak escapism. Like I was constantly looking for the next vacation. I was constantly looking for the next event, um, hanging out with my friends. I wanted to do so many things that I feel like it was leading, I feel like it was bleeding into my relationship. Like I remember getting mad at Shaheen, like why don't you take me on these dates? Like I wanted to go to these crazy excursions and like not just like a normal date like I wanted him to take me like ice skating on the moon because I felt so drained and bored in my day-to-day -day that I needed the vacations I needed the date nights I needed like the hangouts with friends to be that much more I mean it's not like I could afford anything that crazy but I did have access to money now which I had never made this much money in my life so I was just like I want to go on this vacation Bali I want to go around the world and you know these things were fun they were a great time don't get me wrong but I just felt like I needed to overcompensate like the bigger the better it's funny because when I had all these things I had massage appointments I was getting my nails done I was getting my hair done I was going on vacations I was eating out and going to happy hours and hanging out with 
with friends all the time and planning the next trip which are parts of my personality i feel like it was coming from a toxic void rather than from my natural like abundant happy mindset the more i did those things the more i was just like oh see i need this job because if i don't have this job i can't pay for all of these crazy things and look at my crazy fun lifestyle three years in the future it's like i don't think i needed half of the amount of things that i had um genuinely um i just wasn't fulfilled with what i was with what i was doing nine to five so i was like overcompensating with everything else with shopping oh my god don't even get me started with shopping i don't need all of those things to make me happy and you don't need all of those things to make you happy when you are fulfilled with what you're doing when your work matters to you when you feel like it's your purpose you're supposed to be doing it and i want to go back to the point about me being envious and jealous and kind of realizing they all tended to be the same type of person i was envious and jealous of but i think one sign that i missed here was that not only was i envious and jealous of a certain type of person that wasn't what i did all day i felt like the envy and the jealousy was kind of growing in this like nasty festery way where it was anger and resentment towards these people who were doing what they loved right and I think that's a sign that you aren't doing what you love when you feel that kind of like anger and hatred towards them and you want to like move them over so that you can get ahead but these days I notice it doesn't come out of this like nasty toxic place because I know I'm going in that direction like if I'm envious of something it's just like that looks like that would be a great time and I need to learn something from this person or there's something I'm missing to get to that step it's actually a good thing and I think it's a good thing because it shows you that you're in the wrong place and that is a good sign when you know you're in the wrong place that is the only way you can make progress to get out of it and I think the most obvious one and a lot of what I hear from my friends who are going through this or people I know who have quit and we're talking about the period before they left your your mental and your physical health just plummet um, my mental health plummeted in a way that I just I would hate to be that person today like I think that moment in leaving corporate helped me develop so many habits that I, I just like love today and I needed that. I needed to deteriorate in a way to get back up and overcompensate in a good way. Like I was saying, like I was looking at screens all day. I was literally like hunching my back to do my work in the bed like every day because I was so depressed. I would stay in bed all day. I would leave to get food, fast food. I think I literally developed like an issue with my hand because I was constantly clicking and pressing on my mouse at like this worst angle ever. And I was overcompensating with so much stuff like excursions and shopping and indulging it was almost like i needed dopamine hits left and right i needed to be on tiktok i needed to be on instagram now it's just crazy how like not present i was with my day in my life because these are hours and days of my own like precious life that i feel like i was just trying to escape from which is sad you know and i kind of just want to end off with I think the ultimate way that I knew that corporate wasn't for me was just this deeper inner voice, so known as our intuition. And it's not super clear. You do have to get rid of the noise to listen to it. But this voice, I mean, this voice has honestly been around since I was young, that like kind of begging and pleading for me to do something with my life and telling me that I, you know, you're meant to be someone, you're meant to give and you're meant to talk and you're meant to, you know, be somebody. Not only was I ignoring that, I think I was just ignoring the sign that I just was not not fit for this environment anymore and it was so hard to leave because I was thinking about what if I don't have the money what if I don't make it I'm on my own like I can only afford three more months to live I've never freelanced before I love marketing but I've never done it before this is really interesting to me but what if I fail I had so many doubts that it literally took me from like when I realized that that leadership summit that something was off in March of 2020 to October for me to be like I'm going all in and take the lead that whole time I was doubtful contemplative reflecting talking to people looking at videos like this I just want to say if you are leaving because you are pursuing something that is closer to what your intuition is calling you to do I just highly doubt that you are going to completely fail and fall flat on your face you're not just leaving something out of haste or out of anger or out of lack you're leaving something to go towards something more abundant that passion that you have that purpose you have is ever flowing it's basically the excess in your cup that you have to give and I highly doubt that you're not gonna find a way to make that make income for you eventually it takes a 
lot of time, it takes a lot of hard work, but I believe everybody has a calling. It's just how good you are at listening to it. And if you're not gonna listen to anything else, listen to that intuition, that inner voice that keeps nagging at you to do something. Don't have to know how it's gonna look and you won't know how it's gonna look. It's gonna be scary and confusing like it was for me and it continues to be for me at every stage that I get to, but you will have an idea of the next obvious step. My next obvious step, I don't know what direction I should go in. I don't know what field, I don't know what career, I don't know what else, but I do know I don't like this. And a lot of times you just have to keep going on the journey. You just have to keep taking action and the reasons will come to you. They will start to unfold as you go throughout the journey and take action. And I think that's the biggest mistake is people wait until they have some major sign that will just fall into their lap for them to leave or change. The sign is that you're unhappy. The sign is that you're not fulfilled. The sign is that you've become someone else that you don't even recognize. Those are the signs. It's not to villainize the company. I made the choice to be there. I think what I'm trying to villainize is ignoring your calling and ignoring yourself and your intuition. I think the first step is just to answer the call. I don't think I would have ever got to this point where I'm a full-time content creator and entrepreneur of a new company and brand called San Jose which is actually inspired by this message of living life without reason and following the journey even if you don't know the steps and I would have never been able to create things like this if I hadn't just taken that leap for that one time and listen to my intuition and my voice telling me that there was something more no matter how silly it sounded no matter how crazy it would have been to leave my job with no plan or be a full-time content creator at the time make YouTube videos for a living like I'm doing it and that's only because I listened to myself I encourage you to do the same I hope to see you there and go forth and prosper. I believe in you. You can do this. You got this.